So where is the line between genuine politics and performance politics? And I'm told there is one, but it also depends on who you ask. That question was being asked today by Idaho lawmakers as they passionately debated an abortion resolution. In recent weeks, some Idaho lawmakers have pushed for a day of recognition to what they call acknowledge the loss of life from the Roe v. Wade decision. Critics pushing back on that idea, and not for anything that has to do with the procedure or the legality of it. Here's Joe Paris with a look at the debate around the proposed Day of Tears. This House resolution generated passionate debate on the topic of abortion. Republican Representative Barbara Ehart is sponsoring the idea to, quote, acknowledge the loss of life from the millions of unborn children since the Supreme Court's decision in Roe v. Wade. In the resolution, Ehart lays out a way that she would like to honor the occasion. The House clerk picks it up from here. That January 22nd in perpetuity hereby be recognized as the Day of Tears in Idaho and that the citizens of Idaho be encouraged to lower their flags to half staff to mourn the innocents who have lost their lives to abortion. Ehart kicked off debate, explaining her idea. What we're actually doing is we are creating a day of remembrance that's helping us to remember an egregious wrong that's been perpetrated on our kids on the United States. And I hope we don't have to continue to remember it because I believe that in less than a year from now, we are going to be able to celebrate because the laws are going to be changed and it's going to be sent back to the states as it should. That is my hope. Ehart is referring to the expected challenge to Roe v. Wade at the Supreme Court. If the conservative-leaning court reversed the landmark case, women could lose the right to an abortion. Idaho Democrats responded in debate to push back on the idea, specifically the part that involved lowering flags. Debate for critics of the idea wasn't centered on abortion or reproductive rights, though. Instead, respecting the American flag. Is this the path we want to take as political parties, that we hijack and use this as a billboard to carry some political divisive message? This flag deserves so much more respect. And by taking advantage of it and using it to spew whatever divisive message you want is a complete shameful disrespectful to this flag and the people who've served serving it. The legislation is a resolution, meaning it's basically just the message from lawmakers. Still, critics of lowering the flag for Day of Tears highlight that lowering the flag has specific conditions about who can order it on the state federal and local level. Only presidents, governors of states, territories, or possessions can issue half-staff orders. Ehart pushed back, explaining her idea more. For our private businesses to consider lowering their flags at half-staff, there's no mandate. There's nothing uh, that would uh, uh, fly in the face of honoring others who pass on, but we, we will admit that we lower that, stat, that flag for many reasons, and to honor a large segment who's no longer here, I believe, would be a good use of uh, those who would like to join in with us. Debate continued along the lines of paying tribute to lives lost through abortion and respecting the American flag. This isn't, a, this isn't about whether you're pro-life or pro-choice. This has nothing to do. Your vote today should not be informed in any way, shape, or form by your feelings about abortion and its legality. This is about the proper treatment of our flag, period, full stop. This isn't a cheap ploy. This is about putting us in a position to remember and, and in our own way doing something about it. Interesting, Joe, that the Republicans are usually the ones talking about respecting the flag, and the Democrats pick that up for this debate. But I was curious as I was listening to your story there. So what they're saying is because, like, for example, the flag at the State House, if this were to pass and it goes all the way through and the governor signs it, would the flags at the State House, the American flag, be lowered to half staff on this January 22nd? So it's an interesting question, Brian, because this is a resolution and it passed the Idaho House. It had previously passed the Idaho Senate, a very similar resolution, but it really doesn't hold any weight other than it being a message from lawmakers. So to answer your question, this did pass the Idaho House, but we really shouldn't expect Governor Little to order the flags to be lowered to half staff every January for this event uh, because the governor likely wouldn't do that. It would However, still be up to him, basically. It would be up to him. If for some reason he decided, yes, as the governor of the state of Idaho, I am ordering this, then that's that's his 
job. I mean, that's in his job description. He has the power to do that. However, just because the state legislature would pass le a resolution about this doesn't mean it would have any effect. So as you heard Representative Ehart allude to, she, she sounded to uh, really imply that she was having this resolution out there and encouraging private citizens and private businesses to lower their flags. Now, some argue that even as a lawmaker asking people to do that may be inappropriate. Others say that she's really just expressing her First Amendment right and, and encouraging others to do something. But in terms of this being an official thing where state flags are being lowered, likely would never see that. So the question still is out there hanging, laugh staff, wherever. Is this just performative politics in an election year? It's up to the voters to decide. Yes. All right. Thank you very much, Joe.